Hawaii. Often seen as an island paradise, it is something of a crossroad of the Pacific. Flagged as one of the top vacation destinations, nearly 8 million tourists visit the islands annually from all over the world. From the beaches to the rainforests to the waterfalls, those who visit often hope to find relaxation in this sunny archipelago. Boasting pristine beaches which are continuously ranked among the top in the world, few places rival its beauty. This, however, is not the Hawaii we are here to talk about. Only those who go beneath the surface will begin to understand the story behind these islands. My name is Dieter Stelling. Growing up along the coast of California, the ocean has always been a major part of my life. Raised on a diet of David Attenborough and Discovery Channel, I developed a love for the marine world at an early age. I'm Alexander Daniels, and being raised in Delaware, the only ocean I knew was the Atlantic. We both moved to the island of Oahu to attend the University of Hawaii at Manoa, where we both became avid freedivers. Freedivers, unlike scuba divers, do not use tanks and gear, instead relying on a single breath of air. Mostly, we've taken advantage of local dive spots to sharpen our underwater photography skills. Over our years of living here, we've come to learn about Hawaii's reefs and their inherent and fascinating complexity. This is our Hawaii, and you're about to see it through the eyes of a free diver. Of the animals we commonly see on our dives, perhaps none are more charming than the honu, or green sea turtles. As adults, these herbivores feed mainly upon algae, which gives their fat deposits a greenish coloration, hence the name. As infants, these animals feed upon small fish, sponges, and sea jellies, but in Hawaii, most of the turtles we see are adult females that come to feed. With their relaxed and even friendly personalities, they are always a joy to see on a dive. Though threatened due to accidental entanglement with fishing nets and the destruction of nesting beaches, these reptiles have been making a healthy recovery. They're still relatively rare throughout most of their home range, but here in Hawaii, they are seen on almost every dive. All coral reefs are complex and intricate biological systems, and those off of Hawaii's coast are of no exception. Due to the isolation of the islands in the center of the Pacific Ocean, relatively few animals from the other reefs of the world have successfully colonized the archipelago. However, those that have made the journey from the Indo-Pacific have diversified incredibly, and now about 25% of fish species in and around Hawaii are endemic, found nowhere else in the world. One such species is the Hawaiian cleaner wrasse, which is far more colorful than its mainland counterparts. These wrasses are famous for forming mutually symbiotic relationships with larger fish, picking parasites and dead skin from the bodies of their hosts. Hawaii also boasts a broad range of colorful butterfly fish species, including the ornate butterfly fish. Most, like the threadfin butterfly fish, live out their entire adult lives in pairs. Also among their ranks is the line butterfly fish, which is arguably the largest butterfly fish in the world. 
Long-nosed butterfly fish are usually rather shy, while raccoon butterfly fish occasionally form large schools. Surgeon fish, like these convict tanks, will also form large schools for protection when they graze upon algae mats on the reef. In addition to numbers, they can rely on venomous dorsal spines and bladed scales near their tails for defensive purposes. Schools of tangs, like these yellow tangs, will sometimes be infiltrated by a predatory trumpet fish, hoping to use stealth to score a meal. Hawaii is also host to a variety of moray eels, like this snowflake moray. Morays are unusual fish with snake-like bodies that are perfectly suited for wriggling through rocky crevices. Hawaii has an unusual density of moray eels because the archipelago's isolation prevented many other predators from colonizing the reefs. One of the more common species to be found here is the white mouth moray, which often swims in broad daylight while hunting for prey. Morays are famous for having a second set of jaws in their throat, which helps them clamp down on otherwise slippery food, such as an octopus. The octopus is a shy but intelligent invertebrate. It has the ability to change both its color and texture, which is an invaluable trick for an animal that wants to hide from predators. It also has full and dexterous use of its eight arms, allowing it to manipulate difficult objects. Though it only lives for about a year, this animal is an unmistakable favorite on the reef. Unfortunately, these beloved reefs are facing a conservation crisis. Coral reefs, like most of nature, always hang in a precarious balance. Humans who visit the reefs often abuse them by stepping on or touching live coral, which is very delicate and easily damaged. Careless boats will also drop anchor or tie themselves to reef heads, destroying the coral colonies they contain. Fishermen have also stocked the reefs with invasive snappers and groupers that push out native predators. While peacock groupers were introduced for sport fishing, these fish ironically contain a powerful ciguatera toxin, making them inedible. Runoff, beach degradation, and chemical alterations cloud up the water, preventing coral from photosynthesizing properly and causing them to starve. Not only that, but an increasingly acidic ocean inhibits growth in calcium-based invertebrates like coral. Coral also has its own natural predators, such as crown of thorn sea stars, and various pufferfish that now cause far more damage than they normally would thanks to other environmental dangers. However, not all hope is lost. By monitoring runoff from local settlements and eradicating invasive algae, water can once again become clear enough for coral to grow. Observing reef etiquette and not grabbing onto living coral will also allow it to thrive. There are still some healthy reefs scattered throughout the archipelago, and by working together through conservation, we can protect them while healing the rest.